Hey there, thanks for turning down my road. If this is your first time here, my name's Carl. My little brother and I both work for local farmers full time, but we both also farm together with our cattle herd and our hay operation. Everybody's involved, from the smallest to the biggest. If you don't have the joy of farming yourself, I'd love to help you experience it through this channel. Whatever your background, you found the right place. This is Dodge Brothers Farm and Ranch. All right, I got the VT unhooked from the case, getting a little fuel in it. Let's go get the roller. So once we get it folded out, it's just gonna be a giant 40 foot wide rolling pin, like we're rolling out a pie crust. But the point of using this on a bean field is it takes all the ridges and valleys out, smooths the surface to the ground up, pushes any little rocks down below the surface of the ground so that we can cut the beans really low to the ground this fall and get as many of those low hanging pods as possible. Also, this is just gonna firm the beans into the soil in the top layer of the ground and get everything uniform and ready to go so the beans can take off and grow. Let's go do it. So rolling the beans is something that we have not done in probably seven or eight years. It just seems like right now the conditions are perfect for doing it. Right over here I'm seeing some uh, wheel tracks from last fall from harvest. It was a little bit wet, obviously if you remember last fall when we were harvesting. And to add to the equation, the forecast is now pretty much no rain for the next couple of weeks. I was noticing as I was planting there were a couple places, even though I had the spring pressure turned up really high on the closing wheels on the planter, there were a couple areas where the ground was pretty hard and the furrow was wanting to crack back open after I'd been across it with the planter. And so what I'm hoping to do with this roller is I'm hoping to just kind of push that all back together, firm it up and get all those beans wrapped nicely in soil so they can hold moisture down there and get started since we're not going to have a bunch of rain. As dry as it is and as dry as it's supposed to be, I just feel like this is the perfect time to give this bean roller a try again. Uh, I rolled that whole first field, the entire 80 acres, uh, and then on this field I'm going to roll just about half of it and I'm spacing it out throughout the field so that we've got some check strips. I'm really interested to see what happens this fall when we combine. I know I know for a fact that it's going to be nicer conditions for combining this fall in the areas that I've been over with the bean roller. It's going to cut better, it's going to cut closer to the ground. We're going to get that bottom couple of pods in some instances where we might not be able to get those pods if we didn't run the roller over it. We're not going to be rocks to deal with, they're going to be mashed down into the ground. So I know it's going to be better from the standpoint of cutting the beans next fall. What I'm really interested in is to see if there's any difference throughout the growing season looking at the beans and if there's any difference in yield in the fall.
doing the calculations for what it's costing to rent this bean roller and what it's costing to pull it across the field with the tractor right now. I'm only burning six and a half gallons per hour with the tractor. I'm going 10 miles an hour. I'm covering a lot of ground. We've only got to make back just under half of a bushel of beans per acre to make it worth doing the bean roller. We get over half a bushel benefit. It's definitely worth it. So I'm interested to see. I'm pretty sure it's going to be worth it, which is why I'm doing it. But that's also why I'm leaving check strips so we can kind of do an empirical study this fall and figure out what we can learn. Now I'm doing some farmer math here and you're going to have to tell me if I'm wrong because I might be. It's possible. But let's just say we've got 140,000 seeds per acre, which is close to what we planted. And 140,000 beans is about a bushel depending on the size of the bean and the weight. So wouldn't that mean that if I could get one more bean from every plant into the combine, that that would be one bushel per acre, right? Yes. So if I could cut one more pod off the bottom of every plant because we rolled the beans and there were three beans in every pod, that'd be three bushels per acre. Now we're probably not going to get one more pod off every plant. We might get two off some of them. We might get zero off some of them. I don't know. but. I'm interested to see. It should be really fun. It should be a good learning experience. You're gonna learn along with me. You don't even have to roll your beans to figure out if it's worth it. I'll tell you this fall. I had somebody ask a really good question about planting in the comments of the last video. He said, so it's great that you have all these colors and stuff on your iPad maps and all these things that you're keeping track of as you're going through the field, but really what difference does it make? Uh, how are you using that information to make money to pay for that stuff that you're getting that information from? That's a great question. I may not have done a very good job of explaining what I'm doing as I'm monitoring that information. Uh, just a couple quick examples. If I'm noticing on my downforce map that there's a lot of little blue dots where the planter's coming out of the ground a little bit, there's a setting on the 2020 on the delta force where I can just apply more pressure to it. and what it'll end up doing is you'll have more spots that'll show up on the map that you're applying too much down pressure but that's much better than having the planter coming out of the ground in certain areas uh, in terms of singulation and spacing if the singulation is really bad lots of multiples i will turn the vacuum down just a little bit and usually that'll take care of that it does show you on the 2020 your percentage of skips and percentage of multiples so if I'm getting no skips and a lot of multiples, I'll turn the vacuum down quite a bit until it starts to raise the number of skips and lower the number of multiples. And that's usually about as good as you can do to fix that. And then spacing really comes down to ride quality. If the seed's getting jostled around a lot as it's coming off the plate, or if it's getting bounced around in the seed tube on the way down, that'll mess up your spacing. So if the map is showing that the spacing is bad and I need to try to improve that, the first way to do that is usually to slow down a little bit, which is unfortunate. Guys don't like to plant slower than five miles an hour, but another thing I can do is I can put just a little more pressure down on the row cleaners and that'll smooth the surface ahead of that row unit just a little bit. And it also sort of acts as a shock absorber on the front of that row unit. But the best thing you can do about spacing is slow down just a little bit. And maybe the biggest thing is if you start to see a pattern developing on that map with one of your rows that you wouldn't see in the numbers on the screen, like a red dot every 20 feet usually almost always means that you've got something stuck in one of those holes on the seed disc and you might never notice that if you were just looking at the bar graph of population on the monitor but you can see those little patterns developing in the map if you pay good attention so that was a great question yes it does cost money to have the technology to do all those things and to have it appear on the ipad in map form but it definitely pays itself back screen so you can see how this works um, watch this one of the hydraulic levers controls the wheels and you can swivel the wheels out on the wings that's actually how you get it to swing out is you swivel them kind of like this 
and then you drive forward until it swings most of the way out and then you swivel them straight and back up until those arm pins can get into these black latches on the front. So let me undo these latches. See the latches opening there? When I pull that lever, open those latches, it also puts the wheels down on the wings. And when they hit the ground, it'll lift the roller off the ground on the edges. It'll drop the latches in the center and start picking up the middle roller. And once it's all the way up, and you got the wheels turned sideways still, when you drive forward gently, it just starts pulling the whole thing straight down the road, just like that. That's all there is to it. Well, we're not quite done with this planter yet. I gotta get these two bags of sweet corn in the ground. Well, I got these two hybrids of sweet corn to plant. I took uh, eight rows of the planter and converted them back to corn. If you don't know how that works, check out the video from a few days ago. Uh, where I converted the planter to soybeans and just imagine the reverse process. So I'm going to try to get each of these bags divided up nicely in into four rows and the next bag into the next four rows. And then we're going to go out and plant a pretty small sweet corn patch with a pretty big planter. So we'll see how this goes. Oh, I left the blower hoses unhooked so that I can't accidentally get any beans blown into the meters. While I'm thinking about it, I need to go back here. And here's a farmer hack for you. If you unplug this connector on this fan back here, this fan won't run when you put the planter down. So that's important if you don't want to blow beans all over the place, because I still have beans left up in the hopper in case I have to go plant some in for some reason. And it's also kind of nice to have half the planter converted to corn and half of it converted to beans, because you never know if you're gonna to have to replant a little bit of either of those, so we'll see. Okay. All right, there's some. Okay, so like I said before, I can assign individual hybrids to individual rows. So I got one, two, three, four. Those rows have this hybrid, the uh, SV9010. Uh, Anthem 2 is going to be on 5, 6, okay, wait a minute, let me delete all these rows, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, I was also able to make a list of active rows, uh, if you can see this or not. It's so sunny, ah! So the active rows, I've got my list made and I just shut rows 9 through 16 off. That'll make it so the Delta Force doesn't even try to put down force on those outside rows and they will not plant. So that's what I want. Okay, here we go. We're gonna plant sweet corn. So I left this spot for it. I'm gonna kind of ease up on the row cleaners a little bit. I don't really need them to do anything. I'm gonna just swath control on, put the planter down. And it should just fill in the gap with sweet corn here. Yeah, it's not happy about those outside rows not working, even though I deactivated them. We got some multiples because it's sweet corn and you can't knock it off quite as good. Okay. So that works good. Other than, like I say, we got some multiples happening. I'm going to turn the vacuum down maybe just a little more even. Really, we're not going to know 100% how we did until it comes up. But it's looking okay on the monitor, so we'll be able to scout our sweet corn with the iPad later this season. <laughs> it's pretty serious business, guys. Putting in a sweet corn patch. By golly, I think I had enough. I think it's all right. That is excellent. Now we got to look at our uh, we got to look at our hybrid map here. That's going to be the funnest. Look at that, would you? Beautiful. <laughs> 
Okay, sweet corn's planted, 2020. Well, the beans are rolled, the sweet corn's planted, but that's not all the excitement. Come take a look at what I've got in the barn right now. All right, let's not scare them. We got our last new baby calf of the year. This little bull calf was born first thing yesterday morning. And his mother is a new mama. She's never had a calf before. So this is her first time taking care of a calf. Pretty exciting for both of them. Looks to me like these two can't wait to get out of newborn jail <laughs> and hang out with the rest of the herd. All the other cows are pretty curious about what's going on too, but we wanted to give these two a day or two to get to know each other and uh, then they'll go out with everybody else. Now that is a beautiful thing. There's nothing I love more than seeing a brand new baby calf up and having a good drink because that's the best way to know they're off to a healthy start. And I'm glad to have our last calf on the ground and I'm glad to have all the crops in the ground. And I'm glad to have you guys following along, asking questions and caring about what we're doing here. Thanks for riding along. I'll see you next time.